What's up, Internet? We are back with N64 Multicart Nonsense with my Multicart. That's a flash cart. It's, it's complicated. Last time we did Hank Hill 64 snowboarding, and that was actually kind of not bad. But now we got to do Kobe Bryant NBA courtside. I do not look forward to this, but after this, we get to do Zelda. So that's good. Ugh. Although it's Majora's Mask. I'm, I'm not the biggest Majora's Mask fan, which sucks because it's like the only Zelda game I own. <laughs> Alright, so let's let's play some Nintendo Sports. That's a logo I've never seen before. Or that. Also, that was a really stylish logo. Well done, whoever the hell you were. I've already forgotten. But you had a cool logo thing. And I guess I have to tweak my audio slightly. Alright, there we go. Should be good. Alright. Uh, press and select controller pack. Don't care. Don't care to do that, thank you. Uh, can I just not do that, thanks? Would you like to delete some? No! Oh, I see. I just have to select the cartridge? This is very weird. Left Field Productions. Yes, that, those are the people. Alright. We'll be these people. I don't know if they're any good, but we'll be them. We're probably only going to do this for about two minutes before we actually move on to something good. Good audio. It's it's not like... Super, super... I have no control over any of this, I don't think. I think this is entirely playing on its own. Yeah, not sure why. Why does every sports game I play have, like, an autoplay feature? Like, what value does that have exactly? Like, is that strictly for people who are, like, betting on the AI or something? Because I, I just genuinely don't see what value making the AI fight the AI, like, actually do. Like, how does that benefit anyone? Why would you buy a game to not play the game? Why would you buy a game to watch it play itself effectively masturbating? Like, like that's just... I do not buy games to watch them play with themselves. I buy games to let me play them. You know? This is... This is sport ball that plays itself, and it's very, very weird. It's it's a choice I never understood. Huh. Really interesting. That's that's some good research, Kizu. So the company who made this was bought up by Nintendo, and then they made enough money to buy their own freedom, and then they closed their doors. It's unfortunate. But left field productions, if nothing else, you had a cool logo sequence. I salute you. But I care not for your sport ball. Alright, time to play something good. And by that I mean Majora's Mask, which I'm not super into, but it is a game I'm quite passionate about. In the sense that it's like the only Zelda game I actually own. Alright, so let's play Majora's Mask. I got this as a Christmas present way, way back in the day. Like, I, I've got the first print uh, gold cartridge with the the hologram on it. In fact, this game was the only game that I ever got so frustrated at, I actually, like, took violence to a video game. Because I actually got this game to 100% completion, and then it, like, forgot that I did anything. Like, I 100% completed this game, started a new game, or, or started the next day just to run around and enjoy it, and it seemed to forget everything because it was, like, the first time I turned on the game ever. And I was so annoyed by that that I uh, threw it against a wall. And then I got frustrated with that, so I started the next day and said, well, here I go again, start it again. And, uh, well, it worked immediately after that. So I guess sometimes you just need to abuse video games to make them work properly. I guess. Oh, Left Field Productions did Excite Bike. I did play the N64 Excite Bike. That game was actually not horrible. It wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. So this happened after Ocarina. Navi disappeared, and now Link's on a quest to find her. Don't worry about that plot, because it gets thrown out immediately and never addressed again. 
And, um, yeah, this, this entire base conceit that starts the plot never actually gets resolved or addressed after this exact moment, which kind of means a lot of the story of this game is kind of weirdly pointless. But I quite like this game all the same. Of this game is I wish I could speed this up, but alas, this is why we give at least 10 minutes to games on the N64 because they need to set up and stuff. Also, there's the creepy mask and the, the puppet boy it's attached to. Who was a side quest character in uh, the original Ocarina? But a lot of characters. And by that, I mean about 99% of them were reused from the original game in this game. But that's because this game was the result of deadlines and, and crunch and a, a bunch of really horrible things. Because uh, effectively, they wanted to make a sequel to Ocarina on the N64 disk drive. But they didn't really see it as something that was working out so they just said look we'll we'll try and reuse the assets we have and in this very very short period of time we'll try and crank out a game that kind of works and that's sort of basically what uh, majora's mask ended up being but the interesting thing is it's one of the darkest entries in all of zelda and it's it's just kind of beautiful like that this was a really interesting progression mechanically, because as as someone who played this game kind of unintentionally the first way, the, the first time I played this I ended up playing really unintentionally because I don't do horror at all, like horror scares the crap out of me, I, I'm a massive wuss. The first dungeon kind of freaked me out and the first boss kind of freaked me out, so what I did was once I got like the the tool to the first dungeon I just decided to wander around and play with it and it turns out that the story progresses based on the tools you collect like you can't beat the game but you can go to all the dungeons if you get the previous dungeons equipment so the first time I played this game I actually basically completed all the dungeons without killing any of the bosses just because I got the previous dungeons tools and moved on and that's not the way you're supposed to play this game, but I like that that was a valid strategy, all the same. <laughs> I've played a couple of horror games recently on Steam. Um, I actually just finished playing one earlier. Like, I can't do horror with any degree of, of uh, real competency, but I, I can deal with, like, light unsettling horror but like jump out spookiness and stuff like that. that that isn't even really horror that's just startling people like I've got a, an audio and a visual sensitivity so like loud noises and and like jump scares and stuff that could legitimately hospitalize me so a lot of horror stuff's out that said uh, I, I did play and review um, Paradise Killer which is kind of psychologically horror in its own sort of sense. Um, I've also been playing a metric crap ton of Inscription lately, which is ridiculously good. And my brother got me that for my birthday, and that was a really, really cool game. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really bad at, like, horror and, and stuff jumping out in the dark and stuff, so I, I gotta... If I get horror, it has to be, like unsettling otherworldly horror as opposed to just jumping out of the shadows going boo. But if you get the right kind of like just consistent like unsettling and unease that is totally my kind of horror. Yeah, I would not be able to play Phantasmophobia. That would 
like, in all seriousness, probably hospitalized me. I know what it's about. But, like... Inscription was a good horror game. It, it wasn't, like, outright scary, but there was something just permanently unsettling about it. And, and the best way I've always described horror that does it for me is you've got, like, jump scare stuff. And jump scare stuff is like a, a sudden shock to the system. It's, it's like a, a bolt of lightning. And aside from the fact that I, I physically can't deal with that, it's not particularly scary. Real proper horror for me, that, that does it for me, isn't a shock to the system so much as it's layer upon layer of pressure, just constantly and subtly applied until you're crushed underneath it. That's the perfect kind of horror for me. Stuff like Paradise Killer does that. Stuff like um, this this indie Game Boy game called Dead Aeus did that. Um, to a point, Inscription kind of did that. Uh, Paradise Killer kind of did that, even though that's a really bright, colorful game, just because of how unsettling the world is. Really, it comes down to not a shock to the system, but really just a well-planned-out, scary story. If you can execute on that well, then you've done horror right. It's it's not about jump scares, but it is about, like, the unease of the situation around it, I think. The problem is there's very little horror like that. A lot of it, also this fairy's name is Tattle. She tattles on enemies. Her sister is named Teal, because together it's Tattletail. It's a clever joke, except not really. She's basically new Navi, but Navi was blue, she's white. And her sister is black. Unfortunately, those are the only fairy colors that we're allowed to ever have. We never get to see, like, green fairies. We never get to see... Well, we do, but we don't get them as our partners. They're collectibles. This game is very unsettling. Like, this game, I think, gets horror down perfectly. I think, in a sense. It's not outright, like, scary, but it's just so unnerving and, and just perfectly creepy. But, yeah, like, I, I can't deal with jump scares and stuff. Like, that is something that could legitimately, like, kill me. <laughs> I'm not prone to, like, seizures or anything, but flashing lights can be a serious issue, and audio, loud noises, can seriously mess with me in, in a really genuinely serious way. So I gotta be careful about stuff like that. That's a weird tree. This character actually has a backstory to it, or at least people have discerned a backstory to this character. This tree is weird. It's a weird tree. Well, I've heard the N64 games on, on the Switch are, in general, not very good anyway, to be fair. But I think this game is good. It's not as big as Ocarina, and I don't think it's as good or as revolutionary. But I think it nails horror perfectly. And I think it just has some of the best atmosphere you will ever find on the N64. I'm not the biggest fan of Majora's Mask. I remember playing this back in the day and being massively disappointed by it just because it's small and less interesting. But it has so many really interesting concepts going on. And it just nails atmosphere perfectly. This is a trick they used in uh, the Forest Temple back in Ocarina. Alright. So even though I was disappointed by this game back in the day, and I still wish I had a copy of Ocarina, I'm I'm glad I've got this game all the same. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? That's an ominous line. Mostly thanks to online creepypastas. But to be fair, this mask salesman guy is creepy in general. Yes, I know you own the Happy Mask Shop. I ran a lot of errands for you for very little payoff. 
Also, he has a Mario mask on his back. Also, that might be a Falco mask on his side. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I, I think if you got access to this, you might want to give this one a shot because it's pretty good. But the Switch version is probably the weakest way to play it, I imagine. Now, the issue I have with the way this starts... Yeah, so this game's got a deadline because it was built on a deadline, so they took inspiration from real life to, to make, you know, the horror of this game happen. Okay, so we got three days to get the Majora's Mask back to him. I don't think it's possible to actually do it in proper three days. Like, outside of the tutorial, which we're still in. The first three days are a tutorial. Because it's all about getting your... Your, your, uh... Ocarina back, basically. So that you can fix your situation. Yep, 72 hours. <laughs> I've got a kitten sitting next to me. Alright, so we gotta go help the Great Fairy. Okay, so the Great Fairy Shrine is... Oh god, that's right, the dog hates me. I have to be careful because the dog will actually attack me. But I think we have to go here first because the Great Fairy did a thing. Or rather, the, the Skull Kid did a thing to a Great Fairy. I'm not sure if it's available yet or if we have to come back at night, but I know the Great Fairy normally hangs out around here. Nope, okay. Alright. I think the bigger issue I have is this game focuses a lot on side quests that mostly don't end up amounting to much, other than like a heart piece. And I end up feeling very underwhelmed about that. And the sad thing is, as underwhelming as I find that to be, that's still more rewarding than Breath of the Wild ever bothered to be. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Great Fairy exploded. So we gotta find the one stray fairy. By the way, this is a mechanic. You have to collect all the fairies in all the dungeons to get bonus stuff. Uh, they're very good bonuses, if I recall. The first one gives you, like, double magic, so they're, they're worth doing, but... The last one gives you the best sword in the game, but it's a C button item, which is so bizarre. Okay, so we gotta go back to where we came. This quest is so... Well, it's, it's a tutorial. Alright, so... The other fairy should be around here, but isn't, if I recall. Because she only shows up at night, if I recall. So we can start doing this quest. Alright. Gotta go be friends with the bombers! This game is also really, really broken. If you play it in, like, certain ways, you can just break it, like, left, right, and center. It's, it's quite good. So we need the secret code. We don't have the secret code. So we gotta go find Jim to figure out the secret code. Unfortunately, I don't think we can do anything with Jim until we get the Great Fairy, because we need a power-up. He's evil, by the way. If you couldn't tell by his creepy, vaguely Luigi-esque face. He's evil. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. I, I might be misremembering. The fairy might be actually this way. I like that his hat looks like a giant pea pod. There it is. Hooray! And I'm gonna hit this. For no reason. I should be able to hit it anyway. Stop scanning and start whacking. There we go. There's that guy. I hate that guy because he possesses the most obnoxious quest in the game. We're not going to deal with that guy. Seriously, he has the longest, most annoying quest in the game. 
and I would love to complete his quest, but the fact is, all it rewards you with is a mask that gives you a heart piece. And that's it. And it takes you, like, the entire game from every area to solve the problem. It's, it's very, very obnoxiously long. Alright. Whee! Alright, North Clock Town. So now we gotta pop the balloon and talk to Jim. And by talking to Jim, we can start the bomber quest. I don't know how much more of this I want to play, though, because we've been actually playing this for probably about 15 minutes now. Maybe five more minutes. This game's good. Also, she's mostly nude, and I don't know how Nintendo got away with that, but I'm not questioning it. Although her face is kind of terrifying. Hooray! She gives us the power to shoot snot bubbles. That's that's what the Deku gets. Congratulations, you get snot bubble power. Alright. And for some reason he was floating. Don't question it. Bubble Blast. They're basically useless. Outside of the two times you used it in the tutorial. Okie doke. Onwards. Because that's a mechanic. We need to shoot snot bubbles. This kid's got a freaking pea shooter and can't do jack. I'm gonna snot bubble his balloon just to annoy him. Why is a, a balloon of the Majora's Mask? I don't know. But that guy's attention. I need the code! I think you can guess the code and actually get it right. Okay. So let's find all five of them by tomorrow morning. If we can do that, hooray. Now if I recall, there's one of them that just hangs out right here. Also, these plants will freak out because there's uh, Kitsune around here. Get back here, you little... Eh. 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 Come on! There's actually two of them. That's not fair. I'm gonna transition areas if I go there. Four left. <laughs> yes, I have seen the Breath of the Wild fairies. <laughs> uh. Alright, well that's two down. Just gotta find the other three now. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. And I can't remember where all of them are. I think there's one up here. Yep, there's one. I always forget where one of them is, though. Two left. I don't know how the others know this. Because we're in medieval times. I don't think that they all have walkie-talkies. This person somehow has a bank system that works across continuity. It doesn't make sense. But somehow you can just store money with them and then time travel and they'll still have all your money for reasons that don't make any sense. But I guess they needed a bank system, so there you go. Is there someone around here? I don't think there is. Now well, we got some money out of it anyway. But no. Although the guy with blue hair that I hate is still hanging out there. Alright. And the night guys will not allow us to pass because we're a kid and kids aren't allowed out there. Until we're armed. Or too young to be armed, I guess. Is there a guy right? Oh, there's a guy up there. I think I know where the other one is, too. I think they're both in this screen. Alright. Eh. 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 Or it might be the same guy, I don't know. Get back here, you little... Alright. Alright, 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 alright. Now I think the last guy's around here. He's got a little chicken, little jerk. 
Sorry, chicken. There. Alright, now we need the code. If only we were human. These kids are racist. These kids are incredibly racist. Okay, so let's pay attention to the code that I'm immediately going to forget. One, two, three, four, five. It's actually five, four, two, one, three. Five, four, two, one, three. They won't tell us again, so hopefully we remember that. I'm probably not going to remember that. You. Five, four, two, three, one. Whoops. That's not right. Okay. Five, four, two, one, three. There we go. At least this kid isn't entirely racist. All right. Now, to be fair, we're not going to do the entire thing, or the entire tutorial, because that would mean we have to wait for three days, which I'm not going to bother doing. Also, you can drown there. Don't drown there. Also, there's a big spider there. That's fine. Ow. Stupid spider. Ow. Stupid spider. Quit it! <laughs> Uh Okay, new plan. It's fine. It's whatever. I'm not dead yet, just mostly dead now. Alright. Hope you had magic for that or you might be in trouble. Alright. Gonna climb this thing, gonna run over here. That's a nice transition. Now, we could actually speed up time, but it'd still take forever to do it, so we're not actually going to do it. But we'll go to the, basically, end of the tutorial. This guy. I know he's in Ocarina. I couldn't tell you who he is in Ocarina. And if we look up here, we can see that there's a thing on top of a weird clock tower. That, for some reason, is also a lighthouse. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, considering it's in the middle of the land. Also, the moon's creepy, in case I didn't point that out. Although, to be fair, to be fair, it's not as creepy as the moon from Wiz and Liz. That's a creepier moon. Okay, so because he did some random nonsense, the moon cried. Even though it's very clearly angry. And we got a moon tier. And then the moon tier, we need to give to one specific guy. So we can get access to a flower. So we can actually finish the tutorial. Because all this running around was just so that we could get access to a flower so we could jump. Because otherwise, we couldn't get to a door that only opens on the final day. That seems very needlessly convoluted. But either way... Oh, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. Because it's faster. Using the Deku Scrub Pirouette. Peapod pirouette, go. All right, so we pirouette to justice. I, I really do think it's interesting that the entire tutorial of this game is basically non-combat. Whereas if you look at, you know, um, the, the o Ocarina, has a little bit of everything, but it has a huge dungeon that has a, quite a fair bit of combat, comparatively. Whereas this is basically just run around doing stuff for people. With no actual combat involved. Yeah, so you need to use this in order to shoot yourself up to the clock tower, but you can't do that unless you get the moon's tier. Now, I could not figure out how to get the moon's tier, because I didn't realize you were supposed to look at the top of the lighthouse when I was a kid. So the first time I played this game, I actually game overed here. 
because I couldn't figure it out. There we go. You want this piece of crap? And then what's really, really great is this Deku plot thing he gives you, the, the little piece of paper that tells you you can use this plot, is later used in a huge trading quest that amounts to very little. Because this freaking game. Also, why the hell is the clock tower also a lighthouse? It's so far inland, it wouldn't be able to actually do a freaking lighthouse job. There's a reason why lighthouses exist on coastal beaches and, and stuff. It's to prevent stuff from running aground. But if you put it in the middle of the ground, there's not going to be much that you can do there. Anyway, uh, we've now finished the tutorial. Aside from going through that door and getting our ocarina back, which would take three days of sitting around. Although we could have sped things up a little. But that's half an hour of that game, I guess. It's a good game. I think a lot of people were disappointed by it compared to the bigger Ocarina, but still a good game. On to game number three, Ocarina of Time. The slightly more well-received Zelda game on the N64. I like this game a lot. I'd like to get a copy of this game, but unfortunately, it's not a super affordable game. From what I can tell, it's, it's actually pretty expensive. Alright. Unfortunately, we gotta sit through a freaking long cutscene. Because it's an adventure game with a huge story, so we gotta sit here for a while. It is the tree that spawned the Deku Scrubs, who would be discriminated against thanks to the bomber club. I forgot how incredibly racist uh, Majora's Mask could be at times. <laughs> Link has his eyes open this entire time. He's not trying to sleep. But it's a nice shivery voice clip. You can tell he's kind of having a restless night, even though his eyes are completely open and he's not trying to sleep at all. This is a premonition from the future! There's a big scary guy! He's a villain. That's why he looks scary, because all villains look scary ever. Which means if anyone's ever nice looking, you can trust them completely to be 100% on the level. Good old Navi the fairy. They're mustering. We must demuster. I want to skip this because I've read the story so many times. Especially because I just want to get to the game. Go team up with Link and, and be his his tattle. Oh wait, no, Tattle's your predecessor. Or, or your successor rather. You're the predecessor. This is a neat little scene though. You get like a little POV shot from Navi that you never get to see something like this in, in Ocarina again, really. In fact, Navi kind of immediately stops having a character after this and just becomes a UI bit. Which I think is a missed opportunity. I like that they're all actively like acknowledging that she exists, that she bops herself, and then she just flies through it. It shows that she has physical presence. She's not just a UI thing. Although that immediately stops being true right about now. Hello. Nope, going back to sleep now, Navi. Yes, probably. And you wonder why Link bothers to go on an adventure to search her out after this, considering how rude she is to him. 
She's Navi the fairy. But it doesn't matter because she's now just a UI element rather than an actual character. She's just here to introduce the plot. And then she kind of stops that. Alright. Now before we can actually begin an adventure, we need two things. A sword and a shield. Unfortunately, a sword will not be available until we finish the first act of the game. So we'll just have to make do with getting a little knife thingamabob. I think that's like the only pink fairy in the game. What's what's the uh, crouch button again? Ah, oh, there. That's what I wanted. Okay. Just want to flip over for style points. You know how it is. All right, let's get our sword. I played a hack of Banjo Kazooie that put you in this exact environment using Banjo and Kazooie skills. It was bizarre, but it was unbelievably fun. <laughs> cats do need to use litter boxes. This is very functionally true. Unless they're outside cats, in which case the outside is their litter box and I couldn't be happier for them. Because then I don't have to clean up after them. Alright, is there a thing here? There's a little bit of money. We need all the money we can get because we need to buy a shield. We're going to borrow this treasure. Why there's a giant sentient rolling rock in the forest, it's not explained. I don't think there's anything like that in the rest of the game either. Like, there are Gorons, but there aren't any actual, like, rocks that are just sentiently moving on their own. I should probably actually use this thing. Link will now never have not be armed. Alright. Alright. So let's go this way. Alright. I think we need 20 rupees to get the shield. So we need 8 more. Fortunately, I think I know where I can get about five at least there's another oh okay well there's another pink fairy I stand corrected up all right now I just need three more two more and there's all the points we need I can talk to her I'm not gonna cuz she's in the way Hello, Mr. Shopkeeper, man. 40 sh... Holy crap, I need 40 for that? Okay. Need more rupees. Okie doke. Where do I find rupees? I remember the first time I played this game, I was so freaked out by, like, the spooky ambience of the dungeon that I just ran around this entire, like, forest area for the entire time I rented the game. Again, I, I can't deal with horror too much. I can't destroy this. You're holding it. Alright, so we need 16 more rubies. Got some hearts. I don't think these ever respawn. That's fine, because they're basically there for filigree. Someone just leaves hearts on the floor. I think there's a house that has a, a, a chest with a rupee in it. I can't use my sword, but I can throw. And I will. To ruin someone's life. Alright, there we go. Just a few more rupees. Ten more to go. And I'm gonna be out in Shield City. Population, me. And no one else, because no one else actually uses a shield in this game. Here's what I'm looking for. Well, that's somewhat useful. Four more. There we go. Gotta break all the vases, obviously. If only to just ruin someone's life, you have to break all the vases. It's it's basically a rule in games. It's like when you play Dark Souls. You don't get anything for ruining all the, the you know, boxes and stuff, but you still smash them all. Just goes without saying. Although, to be fair, the remake to Demon Souls actually did have a point to doing it. Alright, got the Deku shield. It's not so useful because it's made out of wood and it'll burst into flames the moment you find something that's fire-based. 
Oh, by the way, the second dungeon uses fire stuff, so it's basically worthless at that point. That's the thing I don't get about Kid Link. Like, I don't like the shield balance, because you're either stuck with a shield that breaks when you go to the fire stuff. Also, this guy's a jerk. Or you get a shield that doesn't break, but you basically can't actually use it. Yeah, exactly. You have to break everything just to make sure that there's not something inside. It's just common sense. If there's a thing there, clearly it must be broken. There are some random enemies that just spawn out of thin air. Don't worry about it. You return, Navi. Yes, yes, you're having nightmares. Bad things are happening. The water is slightly muddy, ergo the world must be getting destroyed. I've played Lagoon before. I would like to actually like try and finish this dungeon. Playing games where you break anything, then the game requires you not to break. I'm sure I've played a game that's like that. I know I've played a game where, like, if you destroy all the pots in a room, you have to, like, pay for them. <laughs> I, I have played a couple games that will actually, like, mess with you for doing it, but... It's, it's interesting to see when people, like, try and take advantage of... Oh, there's a thing, clearly I must destroy it. And, and twist that on its head. It doesn't happen too often. It's usually like an indie game thing. Because there are always people thinking outside the box. Alright. Inside the Deku Tree. Oh, I didn't want that. We got a Deku Nut that looked suspiciously like a 2D image a second ago. But don't worry about that. Got the stick that didn't look like that a second ago. Don't worry about it. I can climb this wall. Thank you, Navi. I don't care. <laughs> that sounds like my cat, you know. Wines to go away. Wines to come back. Never will just let you do your own thing. I think that's a uh, map, so we won't grab that right away. Let's go through here. It's a door. Open it. Okay, I actually won't give Navi too much shit. This is the first door you can actually open in the game. All the other houses actually are just open grottos, really. What's the shield button? There we go. Poor Deku Scrub. In another world, you would be freaking discriminated against. Fortunately, I'm not going to do that because I'm a nice person. Not like those bombers. <laughs> okay, okay. Jump! And that's gonna dissolve, so jump across, that's fine. Grab this. We get a cool little cutscene. There's a little thing to the side we could get. Got ourselves a slingshot. This is way more action than Majora's Mask's intro, but Majora's Mask's intro has a lot more ambience and soul to it. This is just more action. Where I think Majora's Mask is a lot more confident in it just trying to tell a story. And there's a thing up here. I have a little tiny chest. That is a useless heart that won't do anything for me. Woo! Alright. There we go. Onwards! I'd like to try and finish this dungeon if I can. Before we move on. It's not a super long dungeon or anything. But man. You know, when I was a kid this place freaked me out. And to be fair there is one room that I, I think is kind of understandable that it freaked me out. Because there's like little freaking mini-boss things that show up. That messed with me a lot when I was a kid. 
Well, you know, it reminds me of, like the first time I played A Link to the Past, because... The first time I played A Link to the Past was before I could really read. So when I did the... the tutorial... running through Hyrule Castle... I rescued Zelda... and I did not understand that I had to push the throne. So... What I ended up doing was basically running around the entire place because I didn't know what to do. I need a stick. That's what I need. I remember how to do this dungeon. It's been forever. I knew I needed a stick for something. I probably need a stick for a lot of somethings. That's to open that. This button that's just out of camera is what I need to do here. And whoop. And open the chest. And it's a compass. So this room is actually completely pointless. But I always thought it was kind of interesting that, like, the first dungeon, in order to progress, you really had to think more than just adventure and collect. Yeah, I well, I couldn't read, so I didn't really know that I was supposed to push the throne, so I just sort of ran around the whole place over and over and over. Like, I saw that there was a giant square on the on the um, map, so I figured there was something in the courtyard, but of course there isn't. I don't think this is the one I need to go to. Man, I haven't played uh, Link to the Past in forever. I, I really should, because it, it really is kind of like my favorite Zelda game. There we go. Took unnecessary damage! Also, I need to go through that door. Also, there's a gold skeleton there. We don't need to actually deal with it, though. This is a little chest. Gives me a heart. Yay! Roll. Alright, burn that. And then save that. Alright, cool. We're good. Shield up. There you go. Problem solved. Oh, come on. I dealt with it. I've never seen them actually do that. Huh. Come on, dude. Pop up so I can smack you with your own shot. You'll never do it again, except you totally will do it again. I need to shoot that stupid uh, thing. The order is two, three, one. It's fine. Shoot the eye because that's got to be really painful for it. Obviously. I always thought this room was really peculiar. I always thought this area was really strangely designed. Like, I don't think there's really too many levels or areas. I need to backflip over that. Too many areas in this particular game that feel quite like this room. That's just kind of a weird trap sort of thing. Back. Fine. I'll do it the way you want me to. I'll hit the switch. Then I'll go back over here. And I'll wait for the stupid thing to come back. And I'll jump. Nah. Stupid game. It's not like you're a great game and everyone loves you or anything. There we go. Alright. <laughs> well, that's scats for you. Like, they, they fall asleep pretty quick. You can push this block. I don't think you actually need to, though. Like, it's literally right there. Should be able to just jump up there, I would think. Yes, thank you, Navi. 
I wish I could skip all this dialogue. Okay. Climb. Let's see if I can just... Nope. Can't quite do it. Fine. I'll do it your way. Eh. 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 Alright, there we go. Climb up. Door locks. You're dead. Need to use the mighty stick again. The stick has solved all my problems. Let's not let the stick burn, though. We actually need it. You're dead. Now, if I recall, this is the exact room that freaks me out because of these stupid things. Yeah, these guys freaked me out when I was a kid. Also, in general, like, the re-deads. I've never been able to handle the re-deads. When I was a kid, uh, when I finally managed to muster up the courage to actually play through the game in such a way that I could actually go places, um, I ended up skipping the Shadow Temple entirely and just doing the Spirit Temple. And then once I did that, saying I was done. <laughs> just because I, I could not stand the re-deads because zombies freaked me out. Alright. Stick. Do a thing. Also, this area requires bombs, so you won't be able to do much until you come back later. Yeah, the stick is mightier the sword in this game, really. In fact, there's a lot of really fun tricks you can do with this stick that, like, mess up the game's programming. To the point where it thinks you're permanently slashing with your sword every frame. It's, it's a speedrunning trick, but it's, it's quite a good one. Okay, so next we gotta shove this down here. And almost done with the level. Okay, climb up here, grab the mighty stick. There's another gold skull tilla up there. Hmm. Sword powers activate! Alright, so it's 3 2 1. 2 3 1. 2 1 3, whatever. You. 2. Uh, I think it's 2 1 3. 1. Sorry. If there's nothing else, there's like nine possibilities for this could be. Nope, that wasn't it. Alright. Well, I know it's used the first one, so it'll be 2 3 1. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Now, if there's four of these, that could be an issue. I'm just gonna stand here. Then you won't be able to go away. <laughs> it's annoying, so I'm gonna tell you how to beat the boss. It's a giant eyeball, so, you know, stab it in the eye. <laughs> I mean, it has a giant eyeball, and eyeball's a giant weak point. I would think that would be obvious, but I guess not. This environment's quite cool. They, they had some really fun camera work in this game. Especially early on. Yeah, yeah. You're Queen Goma. You're kind of vaguely spider-ish. Also, you look like a hand. And there goes your eyeball. And then it'll shoot babies at us that we have to kill. Quit blinking! Also, I should be able to hit you there. So quit giving birth. It's gross. Eat slingshot. I don't care. Navi. Oh god, Navi. 
You're ruining things for me. There we go. I think we only have to do that one more time. But yeah, you know, this this is a really cool game. I, I can see why some people say this is the best game ever made. I don't agree. But I totally understand why they think that, I think. There we go. Definitely a very impressive game. I think I would probably rate this as like my fifth favorite Zelda game, which is probably heresy to most people, but it's definitely very, very good. And I wish I did have a copy of this. A nice gold one to match the gold Majora's Mask I have. But, very good game. Very good. And I think everyone who likes adventure games should probably play that at some point. Okay, so, what have we done tonight? Uh, we have done three games. Next is LEGO Racers. This game I played very briefly. It is incredibly legit. I think this is quite a cool little racing game. This is a game I would love to get as well. Because it's a racing game. It's it's a cool kart racer. But it's a kart racer where you get to like hand like design your Lego kart. It's it's very neat. The people who made this really did care. And then it apparently got a sequel that's not so good. But I think this is pretty cool. I've played only a little bit of it, but I can say with full certainty this is a game I'd like to get. I don't think it's too expensive. I think last I checked it was like $15, which is certainly affordable. Alright, let's 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 actually do some Lego racing. So, we're English. Uh, I don't need to save, that's fine. Continue. So let's build. New racer! Continue without saving. Okay, so we gotta make ourselves a, a character. We need a hat. Or hair, I guess. You can have one or the other. It's Lego, okay? What would be cool? <laughs> uh, kinda like that. What do we have for here? Let's, let's check out our options. I'm gonna... I don't really like those face options too much, so we'll go with the Dark Knight Helm. Let's see, what do we got for for stuff we can do for shirts? Uh, what speaks to me? I kind of like that. And then pants. You can change what kind of thong you have, or you can change your legs. Let's, let's go with... Let's make a license. Right. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Good enough. Alright. Time to build a car. Okay, how do I... Alright. How do I rotate Z? Obviously. Whoopsie. How do I... Okay, so... This is weird because it kind of controls vaguely isometrically. Okay, plop that there. Plop that there. Gonna plop this... Here? Plop that there. Let's get some new parts. Ooh, white parts. Yes, please. Building the Lego car. Space parts, because it's going to be part spaceship. Because spaceships are the best parts. Uh, whoopsie. No, I want... Uh, 
How do I? There we go. That's one. Yeah. Now I want to rotate that. Whoa, that's not quite right. Whoopsie. Uh. Uh oh. How do I remove a part? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, I can put thrusters on? Rock and roll! Obviously, I need to do all these things. Can I... I, I want to undo all the parts and start again. I've got so many IDs for my Lego car. Let's try this again. Because we clearly need spaceship parts. Okay. Let's see. Rotate. Okay. Uh, we need... First and foremost, we need a command console. So, like, that's gotta go there. Obviously. Next. Next, we need some fins. To show the world we mean business. Alright. Yeah, that's gotta go right there. Alright, cool. Oh, I would love to get like, giant thrusters. <laughs> that would be quite cool, but I don't think we're gonna have that happen. Uh, where are those cool these bits? Okay, uh, I need to rotate these parts. And then I want this part to go here. And then... Ooh, what was that? That was neat looking. Is that a big gun? Yes, obviously. Oh, wait, I, I should probably rotate those parts. Uh, hold on. Remove that. And then rotate. Does it go like that, or does it go the other way? I think it goes the other way. Alright, well, obviously we need these giant thrusters. Uh, that's not gonna go back. It's a little limited, but you know, it's it's pretty cool. Ah. Can I get a smaller back fin? No, I can't do that. Could probably do something like that though. Alright. that there. Grab the other one. What did I do to the camera? There we go. Pop that there. Yeah, all right. That's gonna be our Lego car. Rock and roll. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna assume that's gonna hold. So let's go to the main and go circuit race. All right, let's get racing. Okay, so let's do some car racing. your build affects how it handles. This is a little bit slippy, but... Oh, I want some power-ups! Give me power-ups! What's the power-up button? C buttons! Nope, that's camera. Nope, that's camera. Oh, that's, that's first person. Okay, that's not useful. No. Okay. What is the power up button? Please help me. Okay. Uh, well, it's not B. It's not the shoulder button. Okay, it's the Z button. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, 
Okay. Have an oil slick. <laughs> oh, you have shields. That's not so good then. Okay, so the wiggle lines is the shields. Got it. Whoa! I'm guessing the, the white brick doesn't actually do anything power-up wise. You need to like get things to augment it. I'm thinking. Oh, there's a cannon on that like parapet. That's cool. Okay. I'm in second. I don't see first place though. Eh. Grappling hook powers. Grappling hooks in racing games is an interesting prospect. Have a bomb. I'm sure it'll be a real blast. Ooh, secret route. Yes, please. I don't know where first place is, but I'm in second, apparently. Woohoo! <laughs> this game is neat. White, I think, is like an augment, so you need to like have a secondary power-up when you actually use it. Or, or rather, you need to pick up a second power-up afterwards, I think. I, I think is what's going on. These environments are really nice looking. There seems to be a, a like, quick start as well. I'm guessing press A button on one or less. It's usually two in these kinds of games, though. Aw, oh, there's a, a wolf howling. Cool. Shield power. Yeah, he has a different color shield, so I'm guessing he got the augment. Was that a themed trap? Or was that just a part of the environment? I mean, either way... Very cool. That's a thrust. I'll take that. Holy crap. Okay. The AI is not a pushover. They seem to be pretty powerful. I'm not sure if you could dual power white. You could try. Problem is I'm, I'm just having trouble staying alive right now. Okay, so we got a white one. Uh, and then we got the green shield, which is more powerful than the blue shield, assuming. That missed. Alright. Need to get white power-ups. Whoa! There's a super good grappling up there. Holy crap. Okay, let's grab that. Oh, missed it. I really want to come in first, but damn it, I want to see if I can power up the white power up. Oh, that turn is really awkward. I think someone just tried to grappling hook me and I ended up getting a little bit of a boost off them. <laughs> oh, well played. Haha! <laughs> Grappling hook in racing games is fun power. Okay, 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 okay. Hell yeah! My super carmobile wins! <laughs> this is a pretty good racing game, you know? I, I, I could see myself getting this, for sure. I've heard the sequel's not as good, though. Okay, let's do one more race. Oh, it's in space! Well, I'm definitely gonna win, because I'm piloting a spaceship! Okay. White power? Okay, so we got the white power. Now we just need another white power. Here's another. Ah, oh, I think he just took it. Crap. Let me pick up the white power up so I can see if it does a thing. Okay. Oh, nope. 
that wasn't happening. There it is. Oh! It's surprisingly hard to drive a straight line in this game. Oh! Okay, I'm guessing that's a shortcut, but the game does not want us taking it right now. I saw a couple of colored lights on the side. I'm... I think I understand what I have to do. There are those, like, colored gates. I'm thinking if you drive through the specific order of colored gates, you'll open them. I'm guessing. Okay, got white power up. Oh! That's pretty cool. Does not look like white is powered up. Okay, we want to go through. Let's try blue. 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 Okay, it's red, blue, 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 blue. Oh, rock and roll! Ha ha ha! This game is good. I like this. It's not quite Diddy Kong good, but it's pretty good. I gotta say, I, I think I might have to invest in a copy of this at some point. Okay, I don't know how I ended up facing backwards, but that happened. Okay. So, red. Blue. Blue. There it is. Alright, so you gotta solve that little puzzle to get a secret little path. That's not bad. And I came in second for doing that. That's pretty cool. You're a very good thing, Lego Racers. You're a very good thing indeed. I quite like you. Alright, I think we have time for one more. It's a little after 6 a.m. But let's see. One, two, three, four. Load Runner 3D will be the final one for tonight. I'm vaguely familiar with Load Runner. It's where Bomberman came from, kind of. I don't care to attach a thing. That's fine. Infograms. All right, new game. This looks like Space Station Silicon Valley or something. Except I'm betting I'm gonna like that game more because Space Station Silicon Valley was really good. Or maybe like, um, what was it, Body Harvest? Body Harvest is pretty good too. Oh, I can just, okay. Uh, I guess we're going this way? All right, let's go. Transferring to level one. Collect the gold. Don't run into Bomberman. I've played Load Runner before. I played Championship Load Runner before. That game is stupid. Okay, shoot the ground. Okay. 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 Uh-oh. 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 I think I'm stuck. And I'm dead. Because Load Runner! You know what was interesting about the original Load Runner is it was... When it was localized by Broderbund, they included, like, a bunch of lore. Not directly telling you anything, but, like, they connected it to a bunch of other games they localized. So that they all had, like, a connection, lore-wise. It was very interesting if you actually did some research into it, as I have. Okay, so we want to blow that up, we want to blow that up, we want to blow that up. There we go. We have a face! It looks generic! And we got a perfect score, because I think we actually needed that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can move in three dimensions, sort of. Did they just give me a jackhammer? I think they did.
There we go. It's basically Load Runner, but in 3D. You know, the Super Famicom had a really good version of Load Runner. Like, I'm not normally into Load Runner, but the Super Famicom had a really, like, legit version of it. Okay. Not... Oh, I see. Okay. So you can use that for, like, there, because you can't shoot down and forward to one square. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Oh, it's a bonus level, I guess. And we didn't get all the things, but it's fine, because it's a bonus. It's fine that it's a bonus and we didn't complete it. It's fine. And there's a bunch of clones of us now for reasons. Alright, so drop the bomb there. Uh-oh. And this is Load Runner. To be fair, it's not as hard as Championship Load Runner, but it's still Load Runner. And if you're not down with Load Runner, I don't think this game's gonna really do anything for you. That plops it out in front of you, so it's still not gonna hit that thing. Because that giant explosion only affects blocks it's directly touching. Because sensible design. And very weird visual design, and I'm betting if I stood next to it, it would kill me. Alright, onwards. There we go. You know, I kind of put this, like, right next to Charlie Blast territory, I think it was called. It's, it's not a complicated puzzle game, but it's one I'm going to suck at and probably not enjoy too much. It's just kind of generic. And again, that's not a bad thing, but it's not necessarily... A thing that would make me want to recommend this game to anyone, really. Oh, hey, there's a Bomberman. Except it doesn't look like Bomberman anymore, because I'm guessing they ran out of license for it. Also, we're not picking up gold anymore, we're just collecting random icons. Sorry, thing that was one point Bomberman. Oh, I'm dead. Alas, the cultists murdered our guy. And turned him into a Bomberman. Although, to be fair, Bomberman was... Or, uh, Load Runner was a sequel to Bomberman, because it was about Bomberman escaping the bomb factory after he became human. Because, like I said, it's, it's part of a giant overarching plot that Broderbund came up with at the last minute. Anyway, that was that. Based on these past five games, would I recommend it? Yes, because Majora's Mask is amazing, Ocarina of Time is amazing, LEGO Racers is legit. Uh, Load Runner, eh... I, I could give or take Load Runner, honestly. It's okay, it's not great, and Kobe Bryant NBA courtside is exactly what it is. It's not something I care about in any shape or form. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and next time, we'll take a look at Mace the Dark Age, which I'm pretty sure is one of those many, numerous, completely forgettable subpar fighting games on the N64, but I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, follow the stream to know we go live because we try and stream as often as possible. Probably won't stream tomorrow because I have to process video for my streams from last week and that usually takes about 30 hours. Um, but we'll see. Uh, if not, we'll probably do it Tuesday or Wednesday, which will be Skies of Arcadia, so look forward to that. You might also want to check out and subscribe to my YouTube channel see everything else I do, which is a lot of stuff. And if you really want to make my day, check out the show's PayPal or Patreon. Support the show any way you can so that I can continue to do what I do to the best of my ability which in this case is reminisce about awesome adventure games on the N64 and have fun building Lego spaceships. Which, seriously, Lego, it's it's pretty much just for making spaceships. Can we all just agree on that? I think we can. And by we, I mean entirely me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, Internet.